Welcome to another episode of ICFC Shenanigans. Today we are going to talk about reaching out to someone. If you're new to the channel and this is your first video, welcome. I am an ex-member and survivor of the International Church of Christ or ICOC cult. I was a member for almost 12 years. I left over 15 years ago and I am here to unpack and deconstruct a lot of the experiences in the ICOC and also journaling my own spiritual recovery. So without further ado, we're going to get into another aspect of the ICOC cult experience. And that is what they call reaching out. Reaching out, as I'm going to discuss in a a few minutes, entails several different components to it. But on its very basic level, when the ICOC says reaching out to someone, they're typically talking about interpersonal relationships. But there are and there are other ways of doing it, but we will get to that shortly. Reaching out is a loaded term in the ICOC. Every cult has their own insider language and the ICOC is no different. This also applies directly to the current iteration of the ICOC, which is the ICC or International Christian Church. So this applies to the ICC as well. And reaching out is an aspect of love bombing. And when the ICOC says we need to reach out to that person or did, did, or they ask you, did you reach out to that person? This is what they are talking about. They're talking about love bombing. And love bombing is a cult technique where people shower affection on you. And they're doing it from a manipulative place. They have ulterior motives, and essentially they are grooming you through being extra nice to you, being super kind, showering you with affection. And I will call it undeserved affection for the simple reason that not because you as an individual are not worthy of affection, but that in the context of the situation, the overwhelming affection and attention that they give to you is unwarranted. And they don't know you well enough yet to shower such affection on you, to bombard you with smiles and hugs and phone calls and texts and emails and, and to be instant best friends in the natural progression of human relationships. It takes time. Trust has to be earned. Affection at that level that love bombing operates on also needs to be, in a sense, earned in terms of you building trust, you you're getting to know this person, you know, the, the, you know, you are reciprocating. There is, you know, an equal or not an equal, but there is an exchange of mutuality. So reaching out is in the similar vein as what the ICOC calls loving up on someone. 
where you're, again, you're giving them affection, you're giving them, you know, love and attention, but your motive is to pull them in and pulling someone in is also a loaded term in the ICOC. And I did a video on pulling someone in on my channel already. I will link it at the end of the video. And that is all is the trifecta you have reaching out, pulling in, and loving up on. And perhaps I'll do a, a separate video where I, I combine all of those because it's it, those are the three components of the ICOC triangulation to get that person entangled in the group, to, to get them connected emotionally and pull, get them pulled in, to get them thinking they're being loved up on so that you know they become fully devoted to the group and inoculated from outside influence. And also this trifecta, you know, of, of loving up on pulling someone in and reaching out is, is also the way to open up the person to the group's ideology. So the ICOC's very toxic belief system, their views on the Bible, their views on on, on all different matters and areas of life through the eyes of the Bible, you know, is accepted. Their extreme views about being God's kingdom and being the only group of people saved. Love bombing, reaching out to someone will, you know, is the idea is for it to bypass your your critical thinking and any doubts and, and to, you know any objections you may have to such extreme teachings and to such fundamentalist beliefs and so reaching out to someone can look like asking them to get together for coffee taking an interest in someone but let's continue Reaching out is, it's making effort to pull someone in. It's making effort to love, love up on someone, to maintain communication, to maintain contact with usually, you know, one other person. And typically, that is what the ICOC preaches is the one another relationships. Someone reaching out to you will pick up the phone and give you a call out of the blue. If they haven't seen you at church or if they haven't had discipling time with you or you, you know, you you know you're you're quote unquote struggling and that person will reach out to you and give you a call or it's saturday night and you're an icoc member and you just came back from an icoc group date and you think oh shucks i man i forgot I, I was supposed to have visitors to church tomorrow. And so you pick up the phone, you go through wherever it is you, you know, took down a number of some random person you invited to church and, you know, you followed up with them, and, you know, and you're like, Hey, do you, do you want to come to church? You reach out to them. You're reaching out to that person. Or with today's modern times, you have all kinds of technology such as Zoom or FaceTime. And 
those video calls now you a lot of times using our smart devices is one of the ways you reach out to someone and stay connected and that's a normal human thing and that's the problem with it is that it's a tool for the icoc and the icc just like many things they use that are natural to human beings that are that are normal and healthy in other settings they use it as a weapon and the icoc and the icc they both weaponize you know uh this they they weaponize reaching out to people and everyone wants to feel like visible everyone wants to feel needed or wanted or loved or or even as simple as people noticing that they they're not around and so in your bible talk if there's a person in your bible talk an ICOC member who hasn't been around for a week or two, you haven't seen them much lately, you haven't talked to them, you'll get a tap from the leadership, someone, and you'll or you'll be talking to other, other Bible talk members. And you'll say, hey, you know what? I'll reach out to him or her. And you give him a call or a video call or a text just to just to say, hey, I'm thinking of you. Or you leave a voicemail or a text message with a with the scripture saying, you know, God has, you know, a hope for you for if your future. You know, the uh Psalm. No, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 or something quote unquote encouraging part of this whole thing is is an encouragement too it's like you're reaching out you're loving up on them you're pulling them in and you're encouraging them it it all goes together so what does reaching out mean i look at it as like a pie if you're looking at this video on the screen right here, you may not be able to read the letters. But, you know, because the font is, I couldn't make it any bigger. So I'm going to read each one piece by piece. But, but look at it as a pie. So what does reaching out mean in the ICOC? You know, um, in terms of different components of it, like I just explained what it means, but here's what it looks like rather. So first it's reaching out to potential members, the love bombing we discussed. So that's the, you know, the interpersonal one-on-one -on -one category where you are, you know, there's a person that you're targeting, you've got your eye on them, that classmate in, in your college class or your graduate school class, or that, um, you know, coworker at your job, or, you know, that guy, you know, you play, you know, basketball with at the Y. It's something, you know, you've, it's some person and, and you, you're reaching out to them is a form of evangelism in the ICOC. And that may mean before you leave the gym, you stopping and making extra effort to have a conversation with, with the guy or offering to go have coffee with your classmate. Just, just extending yourself and showing interest in becoming friends and 
building a relationship, inviting them to to have tea or coffee or to, to catch a movie or something. And that's reaching out. And, and then you have reaching out to struggling members. And we discussed this a minute ago where, again, the scenario in the Bible talk, the person... That, that weak disciple, that so-called struggling disciple has, hasn't been around much, or they seem to be hanging out with their non-ICOC friends, or he or she's struggling with the quote-unquote world. And, and, you know, no one is really, the person's not pulled in, they're not tied in. And so reaching out to them, giving them a call, giving them a text, sending them a text, checking in with them, maybe stopping by their house to just see what, you know, what they're up to. And that is, you know, what that looks like. And then you have reaching out to the so-called followaways. These are people who have left the ICOC. I did a video on what it means to fall away from the church and most of you listening are very familiar with fallaways because a lot of you are considered fallaways, as am I. So anyone who leaves the church or is asked to leave the church is considered a fallaway. And that's a big thing, too, is reaching out to those who've left to try to get them restored in the ICOC, I did a video on being restored in the church and how how they they have a part of the evangelism. I would say secondarily, primarily, their focus is on fresh meat, new blood. But your secondary back burner evangelism is is expected to be reaching out to people who've left and seeing if they're open to, you know, coming back. And, and, you know, and that means going through the whole restoration process and getting baptized again, most of the time. And so that's just the same thing. You know, you keep in touch with that person who's left. You, you know, you, you stay friends on social media. You maybe send them a message on Facebook or or whatever social media platform or email them or give them a call here and there for their birthday. But you just kind of keep them, you know, a loose connection with them and with the intention of, you know, one day getting them quote unquote saved again. And then lastly, you have the group reach out. This is, this is the evangelism piece. All of it falls under evangelism, but this is where the church as a group decides they're setting goals for how many baptisms they want, how many visitors to church we want to have this month. They would have these campaigns and say, all right, we're doing harvest month in our, in, you know, whatever ICOC it is. And, and this is harvest month for the month of September. So our goal is to have 30 new visitors this month and to have, you know, 10 new baptisms. And under that motive, you would, you know, there would be these, uh, you know, cold contact evangelism, like you just go out somewhere to public places and and sometimes you just you separate into pairs like two by two and you go out in in a public area at a park or on on college campus you know at the beach or wherever it is and you invite people to bible talk you invite people to church or you try to get people to you know, even do a Bible study on the spot if you can. Part of group evangelism too is the whole Starbucks thing. There's a term called Starbucks evangelism where you go to some place like a Starbucks, a coffee shop, 
and you have your your Bible discussions there. And the idea is that people will want to join, that you will attract people organically to come join. And if you don't, you also get to look like normal people, you know, a normal group of friends just hanging out, except we're Christians and we're on fire for God type of thing. So those are the different aspects of reaching out to people, whether individually or the groups of people in evangelism. Thank you if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you so choose, please like, comment, and subscribe. I always say you don't owe me any of the above, but I would appreciate it if you get benefit from it when you when you react to the video, engage with it, the algorithm on YouTube will share it with more people who are seeking out information like this. So it helps others who haven't found content yet that they're looking for on this kind of stuff. So that would be a great public service. But thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you guys again and talking soon.